So what are spatial diversity and spatial multiplexing in MIMO digital communication systems? And here we have a MIMO system with M antennas at the transmitter and M antennas at the receiver. And here's one way of sending data. So one thing we could do using these antennas is to take our input data symbol X and send copies of it on each of the transmit antennas. Now we might modify those copies by changing the phase and giving it a different amplitude from the amplifier, uh, but essentially the same symbol is being sent, in this case, of each of the transmit antennas, just with a different amplitude and phase. This is one approach to using the multiple antennas in a transmitter in a MIMO, multiple input, multiple output communication system. And in this case, if we were to do it this way, we can see that because we're sending copies of the original signal, we can think of this as providing diversity of paths between the transmitter and the receiver. So our signal could go is going off the first antenna, it's also going off the second, and up to the mth, and so this is a diverse number of paths sending the same signal. So we call this spatial diversity. Also, we could do something else, and so let's think about that for a minute. Uh, here's the spatial multiplexing. Now in this case, we take our input data sequence, which is a high-rate data sequence, and instead we demultiplex it into M lower rate data sequences. And then each signal then gets sent off its own antenna. Each of these lower rate data signals goes off its own antenna. So here, let's look at the contrast in here. The, each symbol is coming in, and when that symbol comes in, it gets sent, maybe slightly modified, but it gets sent off each of the antennas. Whereas here, these data symbols are first of all demultiplexed, and so there will be separate data sequences going off the first antenna to the data sequence that goes off the second, and so on. And these are now sent at a lower data rate, because here these symbols are coming in at a high symbol rate, and when you're demultiplexing them, if you had M antennas, for example, then you would have M lower rate data sequences to be sent. And each sequence goes off its own antenna. So this is called spatial multiplexing because now you are multiplexing in the channel. You're sending in parallel separate data sequences. They all come from the original one, but they're demultiplexed. So they're different components of the original sequence are going off. Every mth symbol will go off the first one. Every mth plus one offset will go off the second and so on. And so the question comes, how do you decide which of these two to use? Or a number of different hybrid combinations of these are, of course, possible. And of course, the decision of which one to use comes down to the channel. And so we represent that by the matrix H. So the channel H is a matrix, and it has elements for each of the components between transmit and receive antenna elements. So the, the one one element of this matrix is from the first transmit to the first receive. The one two element here is from the uh, first antenna transmit to the second receive and so on. Fills up this matrix H. And depends on the matrix H, all of these different coefficients, path gains, it determines or it gives you a guidance to choose spatial multiplexing or spatial diversity or, as I said, a hybrid. So let's think about that a little more. So let's think in the most basic case before we delve into the matrix. In this case, spatial diversity, one of the things you can do in this when, when choosing these phases and amplifying uh, gains is to implement beamforming. And there's a link in the description below with more details about beamforming. But essentially what you're doing is changing the phases so that the signals from these different antennas all add up in phase in a particular direction. And so if your channel is dominated, let's say by a direct line of sight path, for example, and that one path dominates, one direction of transmission dominates, then you'll be wanting to use beamforming intuitively. 
We're going to look into why in a little just now with the matrix, but intuitively you want to do the beam forming in that scenario when there's a dominant path. And then you'd be right to guess that in the opposite scenario, where there's not one path that dominates, but there are many, many multiple paths all reflecting and bouncing off different walls and buildings and trees and all scattering, then you're wanting to have uh, multiplexing, which is the so the other extreme. So let's look at why you want to do those two things. So let's start by looking at the spatial diversity situation. So in this case, our data stream is a high rate data stream. Each symbol needs to be sent. It's going to send off all the antennas. And if you had a certain time period over which to send, let's say, M symbols, then we can clearly see that in this case, you've got to send them one after another. So you have to send them fast. In this case, if you had M symbols to send, then you would only need one. Uh, you could send them all over that whole time period because the first one of them would be going off the first antenna, the second one would be going off the second antenna, and so on. So in this scenario, you're sending these sequences more slowly or, or the, the data symbols last for longer than in this case here where you have to send each one Faster. So this is a comp uh, comparison between the two. So let's look at the equation for this one here. Uh, in this case, we have um, the equation for the first symbol. The first symbol uh, goes, uh, it, this is a scalar, which represents that complex number, which is the constellation point. Again, for more details about constellation points, there's another link in the description below this video. So here, this is a scalar. The first of the symbols uh, gets multiplied by a vector of these gains and phases, then gets multiplied by the matrix of the channel to get to the received vector of measurements. So these are this one over here, these are scalars, one, two, up to M. Put them all together into a vector at the first time slot, you get Y tilde one. And then of course, for the other data symbols that come at subsequent time slots, you have all the different equations for these, one after the other. This is spatial diversity. Sent at a high rate, one after the other. In contrast, spatial multiplexing, you send them all over the same period, but in parallel. So now all of the data symbols can be stacked into a vector, multiplied by a matrix for these gains here, multiplied by the matrix channel, where the cha this matrix of gains is now diagonal with zeros off the diagonal. You can confirm that for yourself to, to see this. So now let's look at these and think what happens at the receiver. So in this case, you've got M different vectors that are received, and you're going to do the reception by taking each of those vectors and multiplying by a receive beam former. And so this is the K represents the Kth time period. And so you've got the K coming one after the other, and you are getting your estimates of the uh, received vector now uh, and multiplying by the beam forming vector in this case of beam forming with spatial diversity. In the case of spatial multiplexing, you have the all of them are all of the input symbols are sent for all of the time, and you've received the vector over the whole time period. So again, they're sent faster here for shorter amount of time, but with directed energy. Whereas in this case, they each one is sent for a longer period of time, but they are sent in parallel. So in this case, you have the problem of unjumbling them all because they're all sent in parallel. That's the multiplexing. So in this case, uh, your receiver takes the receive signal here and to get the estimates of the input, takes the H and the W combination and inverts it. So if you, if you have the channel matrix and the W matrix, which in this case is a W on a diagonal, then you take the inverse of this to recover your symbol estimates. And of course, here you can see why we need a diversity of paths if we want to use the demultiplex, or if we want to use the spatial multiplexing technique, because we need to be able to invert this matrix here. Now the W component can always be inverted, but the H matrix, which is the channel, it depends, it, whether it can be inverted or not, depends on how much scattering there is in the channel. And if you had simply a direct line of sight, then H, if there's only one line of sight, then all of the elements of H would be the same because the path differences between all of these elements would be essentially the same or very, very close to each other. 
uh, in that case. In that case, you would not be able to invert the channel matrix H. So this is the mathematics that shows you why it's, uh, it's necessary. If you want to use multiplexing, spatial multiplexing, you need to be able to invert the channel. And that only happens when the channel has rich scattering. That's when you would use multiplexing. If the channel has a direct line of sight, then you want to direct all your energy in that direction using beamforming, and then you are going to use spatial diversity. If you want to know more about this, I've put a link to a research paper that I have co-authored uh, on adaptive MIMO, where we talk about these two and hybrid schemes, which are combinations. And you can find that in the description below the video. So if this video has helped you, uh, please give it a thumbs up, like it. It helps others to find the video. Uh, you can check out the uh, web page that's in the description below, where you'll find a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos.